up there. I see it now. The village is called Bresca. It's not indicated on the road, so not a lot of people know this town. It's about a thousand years old, at least. I think we got about 15, 16 houses. I don't think that qualifies as a town. Was there a lot for sale around here? And was it easy to find? A in this village? Any, or anywhere in the area when yeah, you were looking? There's, yes, yeah. There, there's, yeah. yeah. There's quite a lot of houses for sale that have to be renovated. But you can find places for 50,000 euros. It's really small. <laughs> there is one street called Karerunik. And then what does Karerunik mean? The, you, only street. And it obviously wasn't built for cars. <laughs> no, no cars. Uh, cows and horses can pass. And no street numbers. It's all house names. That, yeah, house names. My house is called Cal Gercho. Cal means house. And Gercho means not completely straight, slightly bent, slightly crooked. And I love that meaning because we've used nature as the inspiration and there is no straight lines in nature. Everything is bent. And so it's the house of things that are bent. And everything that we build is a little bit bent. As you can see, we have four levels. The top level is called the wind level. You can see our wind meter. It's a Japanese carp. The second level is where we got the organic pool. So we call it the water level. And here we got a sauna, outdoor sauna with a wood stove. And that's why we call this a fire level. <laughs> <laughs> and then the garden level is down there. The four terraces, they're the four main elements. The house works with the wind. It's all solar powered, so it works with the sun, with the fire. The walls are, are made out of mud, so that's earth. It works with the water, so we got those four elements coming back. As we go up, we get to our water terrace. This is a natural pool. At the end, there is a regeneration zone where the water gets recycled, gets clean, made transparent, and then it comes back into this pool, and then it goes back. And so it's a pool for all life, not just for us. We have, I think, the only frog stairs in Catalonia. We actually built some staircase for the frogs because in this pool they couldn't get out. What do you, what do you mean when you, so a natural pool means what? Like you... It means that there is no chemicals and the cleaning is done with gravel and with plants. And this is the regeneration zone. The water there is going through the gravel in which the roots of the plants, they have bacteria that clean the water. They actually take out the nutrients of the water because if you have a lot of nutrients and heat, you will algae. So you want to minimize the amount of algae you have. And basically these plants is a transformation of phosphor. It's the phosphor that is one of the nutrients that makes them grow. And that goes back to the vegetable garden so that we can close the cycle. And the phosphor comes from where? It's in the water. It's, this is rainwater. It's live. It's all from, it's all rainwater? It's all rainwater, okay. yeah. Okay. We're not sterilizing it, so it's life. So, I mean, what's the experience like swimming? When you put your feet in the pool, you will have tadpoles that come and clean the dead cells of your toes. That's wonderful. But in the summer, this corner is full of water lilies, and you can be swimming and literally be eye to eye with a frog. Then you're just watching each other. And those are like beautiful moments. If you make your pool sterile, you are saying, I exclude all other forms of non-human life. And this is not the idea. It's about how can we live in harmony with nature and so all life can live. And there are salamanders and birds and bees and they all, and they all drink the water. It's natural water. They, it's a habitat for them as well. It's funny because we, we enjoy swimming in a lake or in a, yeah. you know, and that's kind of what and you're And then when it's our own pool, we don't want that. Yeah. And I must say, everybody that swims in this pool then goes like, why, why doesn't everybody do that? You know? And God, with this view, it's just, it's just part of the mountainside. It is, it is. It's, it's, it's an infinity pool, yeah. The house, it's about instead of doing less harm, it's doing good. So what does it mean to design and build in a good way instead of trying to be less bad? What one should do is observe first before you do anything. And so for one year we observed how the sun went 
As you can see, the sun now, this is the shortest day of the year, and the sun stays above the ridge there, which is really important because if you don't have sun in the winter, it's very difficult to heat your home in a natural way with the sun. This is actually the sun space. This is the southwest corner of the house, which in winter captures a lot of heat. This gets us up to 30 degrees easily in winter, even if it's zero degrees outside. And then inside that air is circulated through the house. So this is our passive heating system but also the windows, which are south-oriented. Like right now, it's 24 degrees in the house, but the heating is not on, just because of the sun. And of course, we looked at the wind. The wind is always coming from that side in the valley, because we measured for a whole year the wind direction, and so we had a readout of the wind for a whole year, okay. and it was all, the dominant direction was there. You can feel a bit of wind coming this way. But in, in the summer, in the afternoon, it's really strong. There's a strong breeze coming this way. It must have get squeezed in that valley and it's just, that's a, there's a big wall here, there's a 50 meter wall and it's just sort of squeezed against the wall and then it goes over the wall. So the wind is coming out from that way, always. And it comes up this side of the house, so we designed the house to allow the wind to let, let it flow through the house. Meaning, it, as you will see inside, it's like a, a, one open space, it means you cannot make separations and rooms, you got to design the house so the wind can actually flow through it. So yeah, so, so this is quite warm and this space is heating up. It's really warm inside of here. Uh, and then this heat goes into the house through that door or through those tr little windows there. This is not a heated space, it's actually passively heated. It's warm. <laughs> it is warm, yeah. And what's the wall made of? Clay and straw. The actual thermal envelope of the house is the inside wall. And that window door, it's slightly open now because the heat goes to the top and then so moves into the house. So in a sense, this is like a greenhouse. It's like, yeah, it's a greenhouse incorporated in the house. When it gets zero degrees outside, then maybe it gets 10, 14 degrees here, as opposed to 20 degrees inside of the house. So, you... so it's almost like at the compression chamber, yeah. you are just retaining some of the day. Yeah, because it doesn't really, it never gets as cold as outside. In the summer, it's different. In the summer, we open this, and the main breeze always comes from here. So depending how strong the breeze is, I can open this more or less. And I open these three little windows, and then I got the, the air flowing through the house. Because you can deal with higher temperatures as long as you feel little breeze. It's like when you go to the beach and there's no wind and it's so hot. But then there's a little breeze and all of a sudden it's fine. So you get a bit of a feeling of the summer, you know, it's, and it's like really open. And you're part of the mountain. You're, you're part of it, yeah. This wall here is just sheer right off the edge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So you've gained space then by building this? Actually, no, because uh, there were two floors here. Okay. And uh, this was a cellar, so I actually, in theory, I lost, so to speak, these, these square meters. And that was worth it? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. We are so obsessed with square meters. It's ridiculous. Uh, it's not about square meters. It's about quality of space, you know. Yeah. We can go this way. Is this door staying open? Uh, no, yeah, good. And then this is just all one big living room, open. Yes. Yeah. So the idea is that it needs to be open in order for summertime cooling, is that it? Yeah. And did you even take down walls? Yes. These were actually two houses. And so where you see this pillar, this, this will be a, a separating wall between the two houses. So we connected both of them. There were separate rooms. And so we took out all the walls so that it would be one big space. Because here is, uh, when you open this in the summer, you can open one, two or three of them. This is actually where the air then flows into the house. And at the bottom on the left, there's a window so it can, it can flow out again. Uh, so it's important. Okay, so this is where the air is coming in yes. from this room, the yes. sunroom. Right? Okay. Yes. Yeah, because in, now it's rising because it's hot, but in the summer it's because of pressure. And so it, it's being pushed through here. 
And it's not only the wind flowing through the house, the water as well. This is a little canal with stones from the river. And so the water, once it gets into the house, before it gets to the tanks, it actually runs through the kitchen. And this is purely to reconnect with water. You can see it flowing, you can hear it flowing, because we tend to hide all utilities in pipes and tubes. And so to make it visible again, reconnects you with water, which is very important. We can't live without water, so. So it's coming in off the gutters. Yeah. To live off rainwater, you have to make sure you take all the contaminants out of the water before it goes to your tanks. And so in this rain pipe on the top, you can see a first filter this, to filter all the larger leaves and because it's got a metal mesh. But then the metal tank, that tank starts filling up. And only when it's full, at the top, it's connected with the indoor tanks. So the first two millimeters of rain, I don't want in my tanks because it's like you're cleaning the roof with all the pollen and all that contaminants. And then that's slowly released and actually re reuse it in the pool or on the, for irrigation. But then that water is slowly released so that next time it rains, it's, it's empty again and it can have that function again. And then it'll come in. It comes in the gutters, but then first the first flush is going to start filling. And when the first flush is full, which is two millimeters of rain, then it starts going through the kitchen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then the tanks are down here in, because there's a, there's a basement here. So it drops into the tanks. And we are basically borrowing the water from the sky because after we've used it, we clean it and we return it. So we're just borrowing the water. This is a little bathroom. So we have a shower here. And again, if you want to be efficient with rainwater, you need special showers. This is, it uses very fine sprays. And so this has a consumption of five liters per minute, as opposed to a normal shower, which is 10 liters per minute or more. And it's a wonderful experience. This tap, for instance, it only has a flow of 2.5 liters per minute. When we talk about sustainability, it's like, oh, water efficiency. Many times we're not even talking about the wastewater that we generate. So you have to look at how can our waste become a resource again. Another important part when you want to save water is using dry toilets. So we have a tank in the basement. And if you're not really clean, you have a little bit of water, like a little bit day to clean it. And the urine goes on the other side. A dry toilet is not a composting toilet. It's a composting toilet. So does it drop down or do you... Yeah, it drops. It drops. This is the one, this is the, the tube from the bathroom upstairs. So they both go into the same tank downstairs. It's just gravity toilet. Yeah, it's gravity. So we don't mix urine with solids because urine has a lot of value. So the, the urine goes in separate tanks and in, from those tanks I reuse it to fertilize the garden. When you start investigating, you realize that there is a lot of power in our pee. 80% of nutrients come out of the pee. And so if you don't mix them and you keep them separate, you mix it with water, you have a powerful nutrient for your garden without a health risk for humans. Well, you guys want some cake? Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Wait, this has a passage to look. It flows. There is a there is a hole. You don't see it, but at the end there's a hole and there's a tank in the basement. So it eventually falls into the tank. It doesn't flow. I never had any floodings in the kitchen yet. <laughs> it's just uh, <laughs> Juliana made the cake and it's made out of carrots. carrots. Most of the stuff we made ourselves, so we reuse mater materials. So these are some leftover tiles with some rope. They, you know, they're like lights. So the whole, so this is kind of nice to have an open. I love that. I love it because you stay connected. You have the fire in the kitchen the, and the table, which if we have a lot of people, we eat there. But normally we, we can fit six people here. So we, we, have, we eat here. Another thing I like very much is the work from uh, Christopher Alexander. Pattern language. Yeah, pattern yeah. language. Looking for the qualities with no name. Like si simple things. This is rounded for different reasons because it's like a petal. But if you walk around here, imagine a square table, you would, you would hit it all the time and you would get very annoyed. And, and so 
this is a quality he calls it with no name because as soon as you give it a name then it, then it <laughs> it's got a name <laughs> so the little things that in your daily movements can create stress uh, and you're not aware of it and so think about how you move around the house and what you do where but the same happens when you like when we talk about biophilia look at all the windows this is rounded when you start rounding the windows the light changes it's the way it reflects is starts being different because if you have a sharp edge you create strong shadows and by making it round it softens the light so did you change the walls or was well what we did was first of all insulate we used compressed wood fiber the natural material 25 centimeters in the walls, 16 in the floor, 35 in the ceiling. And then uh, there is this mesh and, uh, and some plaster and then we did a finish. So we have two types of finishes. One is this sand limestone finish and that one is clay straw finish. Most of the materials are natural. We have ceramics, we have wood, we have lime, we have clay, straw. Because one of the requirements was that we screen every single material for their ingredients up to 0.01%. When you start doing that, you realize that most building products have chemicals that are of concern for our health and you end up using natural materials. For instance, there is no PVC, but we found in Belgium, I found a company that has vitrified clay pipes and so it's a clay it's a baked clay and it's what they used to use before cement was invented oh. this 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 is used instead of a pvc pipe and it's a sort of vitrified clay and this pipe actually is a radon extraction system we measured and we measured a very high value of radon and so below this floor and that floor this is a whole system with pipes and uh, so that the radon coming out of the floor is being directed towards these tubes and released through the roof so that we are not inhaling radon all the time. This concept is all, all electrical so we have an induction stove, we have a heat pump working with the uh, uh, solar panels. We do have a chimney but the reason for the chimney to be there falls under the happiness petal mm -hmm. because it's about the atmosphere mm -hmm. and smelling the wood. One of the design elements to make it biophilic is have a focal point. And so we put this right in the middle of the house. This is an open space, so it doesn't matter if you're in the kitchen or you're playing there. You can see this from everywhere. And this it's about creating the atmosphere. You know, they have the, the concept of Hygge, the Scandinavian concept. You can see here the roundness. This would not be the same if it's a straight. And you can see it now, but most of the day you have the water from the pool reflecting through the windows on the ceiling and you have this vibrant light. Did you built in some of the furniture as well? Yeah, that's because the street goes be below the house. And, and so we had this shape, so we, we decided to make the sitting area. Again, the, the get show, the, the crooked the, house. Yeah, it's all, you know, like, yeah, it's like, the, the, actually the walls are not straight, you know, the, the house is a bit like this. It's not, it's, it's get show, which is great. So we, we move the, you want to hang in different places. So now it's in the position where you can get close to the, to the fire. But if we, we have an, a screen there to project movies. So if I want to get into movie position and I go here and then I'm in the perfect position you know, to watch the movie. Or if I want to read, I can hang here. Also in the sun space where you can open the window and you can hang half outside inside. So the idea is that this gives you this freedom to go and hang where you want. They're so comfortable. The problem is once you're in, you don't want to get out anymore because you can stretch this. Okay. All the way. And you're like really comfortable and you can read a book, yeah. just hang, take a nap. To keep the space uncluttered, it's better to have these move to move around instead of having chairs all the. Even if you don't want them, you know, you put them, you put them, uh, you put them away. If you want to use the space for something else, they're not in the way, and so this it's not you have more space. It, 
Yeah, so again, to, to optimize space, we don't have bathrooms for each bedroom. This is a ridiculous concept. We have, in the hallway, we have sinks which are shared for everybody sleeping on this floor. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Chacho. He's a friend of mine working and staying here. The rooms are maybe a bit dark now. When you work with clay and straw, you can make beautiful things. These are doors that we recovered as well. We just took off the old paint. You can see here as well the clay walls. I found this in the river, so we turned into a, this to, into a lamp. Mm -hmm. I can show you in the bathroom on the inside door. Oh yeah, wow. They're like pressed flowers on the wall. Yeah, yeah beautiful. And there's nothing fancy and expensive yeah. about this door. This is just a piece of wood. And so you can build a house with a similar budget, but it's about different priorities. Where do you put your money? I mean, the views, they're, they're, they're amazing. And, and it's not just the views, it's in the morning. Like this morning, we were on the clouds. It's just a lake of clouds. And you're like in another world. Or there is a reserve here where they feed vultures. And they will come by, not just one or two, like 50, 100 vultures, and they will fly right across the balcony, like 10 meters from you. These animals, they have a wingspan of 2.5 meters. I mean, it's impressive when they start circling around the house, right from your bedroom. <laughs> so, well, this is Kawe's room. He's got his, all his toys and his little desk. His room is a little bit less organized. <laughs> and then I have my bedroom. This is a bath tub with a view of the river. So when there's a lot of rain, we can afford a bath. Because it gets fed by rainwater. Yeah, everything. Even drinking. Even drinking. Yeah. And this is a bedroom. We're getting ready for our trip tomorrow, so it's a bit messy. But yeah, this room, I've left the window open all day. Uh, Let's look at the temperature. This is just from the sun. It's 23 degrees, yeah. no heating. And to make sure it doesn't, because it was 26 at midday, I opened the window because it's, it's just too warm. And this is winter. I mean, it was cold. I, it, tonight, it's, it's, right now, it's cold out. Yeah, it's like 4 degrees. But it's the sun. The sun is so powerful. Yeah. It heats. It heats. And when I bought the house, I have this little application. I can see where the sun is going to be at each time of the year. I want to know where is the sun on the 21st of December. And I could see the sun is actually on top of the mountain. And I said, OK, this is good. I like the wall over here. Again, it's a clay, clay and uh, sand. And the curve. And the curve. Mm -hmm. It's just not, you know, not the same <laughs> as, as the street. Yeah. And as you can see, it's always, everything is a bit gercho. This is not straight, uh, but yeah. it's fine. Um, great. Is that mosquito netting? So is that, is that, there's a purpose? Yeah, yeah, we have mosquitoes in the summer. So in the summer, we're all do, uh, sleeping under mosquito nets. Oh. Sarah, but, is that a door? Yeah, that's a door, but it's, uh, it's, it's actually oh. protected. So getting ready for the evening session. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> that's the river. You can hear the river. And that's our water. But in the background, it's not a car, it's a river. Yeah. So a houses can belong to a place and just be in symbiosis with a place instead of just taking from the place. Exactly. If you're looking at the existing situation here, there was erosion. Now if we don't have erosion, we built the terraces, the, all the water is infiltrating in the land. It's not about being less bad, it's about being good. It's, a, it's about harmonizing with the place.